What if I told you the ocean's coolest creatures aren't sharks or whales, but tiny glowing corals? With over 6,000 species, these vibrant organisms are the rare gems of aquariums. Today, we'll dive into four coral types that can turn your tank into a stunning underwater city. Let's dive in. In the aquarium hobby, corals are generally grouped into four major categories, each with its own care requirements and level of difficulty. Up first is soft corals. They're the chill, laid-back characters of the coral world. They're known for their flexibility and softer textures, making them a more forgiving choice for beginner reef keepers. Unlike their hard coral counterparts, soft corals lack a rigid calcium carbonate skeleton, giving them a more fluid and wavy appearance. This flexibility allows them to adapt to a variety of tank environments without the rigidity that can sometimes lead to conflicts with other corals or tank inhabitants. Among the popular soft corals, Xenia and Leather Coral stand out for their unique and visually captivating features. Xenia corals, for instance, are famous for their pulsating motion, which creates a rhythmic, almost hypnotic dance in your tank. This pulsation is not just for show, it helps in nutrient absorption and gas exchange. Xenia corals are also relatively hardy, making them a great choice for those new to the hobby. Just be aware, they have been known to take over a tank. Leather corals, another favorite, are like the relaxed loungers of the reef. Their leathery texture and graceful swaying movements can add a touch of elegance to any tank. Leather corals come in various shapes and sizes, from the broad, flat surfaces of the toadstool leather coral to the more intricate forms of the devil's hand coral. They're known for their resilience and adaptability, thriving in lower light conditions with moderate water flow. And this makes them perfect for tanks where lighting may not be intense and if you desire a wavy coral species, that is an absolute showstopper. Soft corals also have a variety of colors and price ranges, especially when you talk about zoas and mushroom corals. Designer zoas and mushroom corals can easily fetch up to over $100, so while they're easier to care for, they can also be exotic to collect. In terms of care, soft corals generally prefer lower light and moderate water flow, and they're less demanding than hard corals and can adapt to a range of environments. This makes them a versatile and forgiving choice for many reef setups. Soft corals also tend to be less aggressive compared to their stony counterparts, which can help maintain harmony in mixed species tanks. The next type of coral we'll look at are large polyp stony or LPS corals. These are the showstoppers of the coral world. These corals are characterized by their large fleshy polyps and intricate calcium carbonate skeletons. If soft corals are the relaxed friends, then LPS corals are the dramatic, eye-catching stars of the reef tank. Their large polyps can create a striking contrast with the smaller, more delicate polyps of other corals, adding depth and interest to your tank's ecosystem. Among the most popular LPS corals are hammer corals and brain corals. Hammer corals with their distinctive hammer-shaped polyps can add bold, dramatic effects to your reef tank. Their polyps can expand significantly, creating a striking visual impact. Brain corals, on the other hand, have a unique maze-like structure that resembles the folds of a brain. These corals not only look fascinating, but also play a role in the reef ecosystem by providing shelter for various marine creatures. LPS corals generally require moderate to high lighting and stable water parameters to thrive. They're more sensitive to changes in their environment compared to soft corals, so maintaining stable water chemistry and providing adequate light is crucial. They also benefit from regular feeding as their large polyps are capable of capturing plankton and other small particles from the water. This feeding behavior can be supplemented with targeted coral foods to ensure optimal growth and coloration. They're also the first type of coral on this list that requires calcium supplements. Soft corals don't, but anything with a calcium skeleton will require supplementation so they can continue to grow. A large colony of LPS corals will often require dosing or even a calcium reactor. Moving on, let's talk about small polyp stony or SPS corals. They're among the most sought after species in the reef keeping community. They're known for their rigid structures and intricate, often delicate branching formations. When you look at a well-established reef tank that resembles a vibrant coral forest, chances are you're looking at an SPS dominated system. SPS corals have an incredible ability to create complex three dimensional structures. Over time, they build a calcium carbonate skeleton, which helps them grow and provides essential habitats for other marine life. This is why SPS corals are crucial for reef building in the wild. Entire ecosystems depend on their rigid exoskeletons to provide shelter and protection. But while their beauty is undeniable, SPS corals are notoriously demanding when it comes to care. They require intense lighting, often from high-powered LED or metal halide systems that mimic sunlight in their natural habitats. They also thrive in environments with strong water flow, which keeps them clean and ensures that essential nutrients are delivered to their polyps. 
For these corals, even slight fluctuations in water parameters can be detrimental. Consistency is vital, and SPS corals will reward aquarists who can maintain stable conditions with slow but steady growth, eventually turning their tank into a sprawling underwater masterpiece. Popular SPS corals include Acropora and Montipora. Acropora corals are renowned for their branching structures and wide range of colors from vivid greens to deep purples. They can form impressive densely populated colonies that create a dramatic and visually stunning effect in the tank. Montipora corals, on the other hand, can take on various growth forms including encrusting, plating, and branching. Their diverse shapes and colors make them a favorite among reef enthusiasts looking to add variety and vibrancy to their setups. Alright, let's talk about some more corals here. Non-photosynthetic corals are the intriguing outliers of the coral world. Unlike other coral types which rely on sunlight or artificial lighting to fuel their symbiotic relationship with zooxanthellae, NPS corals do not contain these algae and therefore don't photosynthesize. Instead, they capture food from the water, making them fully dependent on regular feeding to survive. This characteristic makes them some of the most challenging corals to keep in a home aquarium. NPS corals like sun coral and chili coral are stunning in their own right often displaying bright fluorescent colors in intricate patterns that can't be matched by other corals. However, their beauty does come at a price. They require frequent direct feeding often multiple times a day, as they depend entirely on food floating in the water column for survival. Maintaining an NPS coral tank can be labor intensive, but for dedicated advanced level hobbyists, the unique appearance and challenge of keeping these corals healthy are well worth the effort. Take Dendronopthea, for example. These corals are renowned for their bushy tree-like appearance, with polyps that extend in delicate feathery clusters. Their vibrant colors can add a lush, otherworldly touch to your tank. However, they come with a caveat. They require frequent and precise feeding, regularly providing finely tuned coral foods such as zooplankton or specially formulated coral diets is crucial for their survival. Without consistent nourishment, these corals may struggle to thrive, making them a bit more demanding in terms of care and maintenance. Another captivating example is the chili coral. These corals are named for their distinct pink and white coloration that creates a unique visual effect in your aquarium. It's one of the easier to keep corals of this type and one I would recommend trying first if you're looking to attempt at keeping NPS corals. Since non-photosynthetic corals do not require light, they can be placed in lower light areas of your tank, making them adaptable to different setups. Their preference for moderate to strong water flow is essential for capturing the food they need to thrive. If you're willing to invest the time and effort into their care, these corals can become the standout feature of your reef tank. Caring for non-photosynthetic corals involves ensuring a varied diet and maintaining consistent feeding schedules. This extra level of attention can be rewarding, offering a unique and visually stunning addition to your reef aquarium. If you're up for the challenge and eager to explore the more unusual side of coral keeping, non-photosynthetic corals might just be the perfect fit for you. Now that you know about the coral types and the hobby, let's take a step back and talk about what corals are. Corals are actually living animals. Yeah, at first glance, corals may appear to be stationary fixtures on the ocean floor, leading many to mistake them for plants or rocks. In reality, they are marine invertebrates, meaning they are animals without a vertebral column. Their bodies are composed of tiny, soft-bodied polyps that form colonies. These polyps work together to create the hard calcium carbonate exoskeletons that give corals their signature rock-like appearance. Each individual coral polyp is capable of reproducing, growing, and functioning as part of this larger collective. Corals belong to the phylum Cynodaria, the same group that houses creatures like jellyfish and sea anemones. One of the defining characteristics of this group is the presence of stinging cells known as cynidocytes. These specialized cells act like a biological defense mechanism, helping corals capture prey and protecting them from predators. While not all corals are venomous to humans, many of them still pack a punch if touched, making them both beautiful and dangerous. Inside these stinging cells are structures called nematocysts, which fire out like tiny harpoons when triggered. These inject toxins into whatever unlucky creature gets too close. This is how corals can feed on small marine organisms floating by, despite their seemingly passive nature. When you're diving into the world of reef aquariums, choosing the right coral isn't just about picking the brightest color or the coolest shape. There's a whole backstory to where these corals come from, and it matters. Wild-caught, maricultured, and aquacultured corals each bring their own advantages and challenges to the table, and understanding the differences can help make you an informed, responsible decision maker. 
Wild-caught corals are harvested directly from natural reefs, making them highly sought after for their rare, unique appearances. However, these corals face significant stress during the collection and transport, often carrying parasites or pests. Wild-caught corals can also be challenging to acclimate to aquarium conditions, and their collection puts additional pressure on already vulnerable reef ecosystems. There have been more and more regulations put in place over the years. And my thoughts on this is that the days of wild-caught corals are likely numbered. If you can, always opt for maricultured or captive raised corals. Maricultured corals are farmed in ocean-based coral nurseries, mimicking their natural environment while promoting sustainability. These corals help reduce the strain on wild reefs, but they may still carry pests and require careful acclimation. Maricultured corals are typically more robust than wild-caught, as they're grown in environments with controlled conditions, making them better suited for home aquariums. Aquaculture corals are grown entirely in captivity, never touching the ocean. These corals are highly resilient and well adapted to aquarium life, making them the easiest to care for. Aquaculture corals are the most environmentally friendly option, supporting the hobby without harming natural reefs. They are in concept free from parasites, though you can't always guarantee that. And they're better suited for tank conditions. Some of the most expensive corals you can buy today are actually captive bred as they've been selectively grown and propagated to create unique colors or traits. Corals aren't the only stars in reef tanks. Various invertebrates play essential roles in maintaining the ecosystem's health and balance. Clams, such as the Tridogna species, serve as natural filters that improve water quality while adding beauty, though they require strong lighting and stable conditions to thrive. Sponges, though often overlooked, are vital for filtering organic particles, requiring moderate water flow and careful handling to avoid exposure to air. Anemones are known for their dynamic movement and symbiotic relationships with clownfish. They bring color and life, but can pose challenges with their mobility and specific care needs. Marine worms like feather dusters and cocoa worms enhance both the visual appeal and functionality of the tank by filtering plankton, contributing to the overall biodiversity and health of the reef environment with minimal care. Thanks for diving deep with us into the fascinating world of coral reef aquariums. If you want more in-depth guides and expert tips, be sure to check out our blog post linked below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos on coral care, aquarium setups, and everything you need to become a reef keeping pro. Hit that bell so you never miss an update, and let's keep exploring the beauty of the ocean together. You can also leave me a super thanks, which goes to further support videos like this. Or better yet, click on the video next to your right for more coral goodness. See you next time.